What is the best animal card in Terraforming Mars? These are the eight animal cards in the base game, excluding advanced ecosystems. These are the cards that give animal resources on the card. On top, we have our one point animals. And in the bottom row, we have the half point animals, which score one point for every second animal. I will assume here that most of you are experienced enough at the game to know that Ecological Zone is regarded as one of the best cards in the game, whereas a card like Pets is somewhat weaker. But I wanted to approach this from first principles and look at what the data can actually tell us about the value of these cards. And the data set I'll be using to perform this analysis is the same that I've discussed in my previous videos. Uh, in my last video, I mentioned we were at around 3000 games. Uh, we're now at almost 10,000. We'll probably hit that tomorrow. And uh, we now also have a GitHub uh, release page where you can go and download the scraping tool if you want to contribute. It also comes with a readme file that includes all of the information you need to get started. Um, I'll put a link to that below. And anyway, so back to the animals. So the first metric we can look at is how many points does each card score on average. Here I have the number of times each card was played in our data set. Uh, this is filtered by two player games only. And this is the number of victory points scored on average. And you can see the, the top four cards are all one point animals, which makes a lot of sense. And the number one card with more than four victory points on average is livestock. Uh, again, makes a lot of sense. This is the one point animal that usually comes online first. But of course, these cards do more than just score points. Uh, so for instance, Predators uh, steals animals from other players. And I'll just move all these cards a little bit further here so we can see we have an additional column now, which is the number of victory points stolen. So here I've gone through the data set and I've uh, looked up uh, the number of uh, victory points that was stolen from the opponents and checked whether it was a one point or two point animal. And when we factor that in, uh, the total VP value of predators is actually higher than livestock. But of course, predators is not the only animal card that does things apart from uh, scoring points. Several of these cards reduce plant production either from your opponent or from yourself. And the beauty of having thousands of detailed game logs is we can now go through each and every game and count how many plants were denied from uh, the opponent or from yourself and then average that out over thousands of games. And that's what we, I've done in these in these two columns here. Uh, we can see that uh, birds is the card that uh, denies the most plants from opponents, almost four plants on average. Uh, whereas, of course, livestock uh, steals plants uh, from yourself. There are also some small fractional numbers here where people played fish and birds on themselves, but that doesn't happen, happen very often. Okay, so how do we make sense of these numbers uh, in order to make a direct comparison? Because it's not that simple to just compare like predators stealing 1.2 VP uh, from your opponent versus you know birds uh, denying 3.8 plants what is the value of uh, or the VP equivalent value of denying someone uh, plants? Um, we don't know for sure how those plants would have been used. Maybe they would have been used to place a greenery next to a city and gaining TR in the process. And then you can say that eight plants would be worth three victory points. Or maybe the plants would have been uh, blown up by Demos Down or some other plant destroying card. We don't know. So it's almost impossible to, to assign exact values to those plants just by looking at the data. So what I did is I went on the HodgePodge Discord uh, where you can find some of the best Terraforming Mars players and I asked this question, how would you value plant prod reduction in the mid to late game? Uh, and I would use the example of you know small animals denying the opponent four plants. What is the VP equivalent value of that on average? And I quickly got a reply from uh, Fred Pacifist. So Fred is a former top one player on BGA and uh, just one of the best players in the game. And he also has a YouTube channel that I would highly recommend you to follow. Uh, great player. 
he said um, it doesn't work amazingly because plants don't have a linear, linear relation to VP. And I totally agree with that. Um, they can be worth two to three victory points if you get eight plants or zero if they don't. Uh, but he would try to assign uh, one plant with a value of 2MC uh, and he will argue that uh, one victory point is roughly 5 to 6 uh, MC. So four plants would be roughly one victory point on damage of damage. And if we take, for instance, like 5 MC per, per VP, use that number, we arrive at a value of... 0.4 victory points per plant so let's keep that number in mind and remember that um, then i got another reply from filter uh, who's uh, also an extremely strong player and uh, a legend of the game uh, he says he would estimate like four plants being worth about two victory points um, this may seem high he, he says but the plants you take from them can swing O2 TR and it helps with landlords. So this goes to show that there are other effects uh, by stealing plant prod. So you can fight for the landlord award. Um, and if you take uh, one TR from the oxygen track that your opponent otherwise would have taken, that's a two point swing. So he really values the plants highly and uh, according to this math we arrive at a number of one plant being actually worth half a victory point so we have uh, one expert player here saying 0 0.4 uh, victory points per plant and one saying 0 0.5 i'm going to be diplomatic here and take the average of those two expert opinions and say that a plant is worth uh, 0.45 vp uh, what do you say 0.4 or 0.5? I don't think it makes a huge difference, but that's what I've used here. I also put some other numbers in this spreadsheet. So here we have the cost of the cards. And if we pull up uh, birds again, we can see that the base cost of birds is 10 MC, but we need to add the cost of buying the card, card which is uh, usually 3 MC. So that's why we arrive at 13 MC for birds. Uh, ecological zone is a bit of a special case because that one places a tile. Um, tiles in uh, terraforming Mars are valued at 4 MC in the game. So there, in in the game, there are internally consistent values for for things. So one TR, for instance, is valued at 10 MC. Um, a standard project has a premium of 4 MC, so that's why an asteroid standard project costs 14 MC. Uh, while an ocean costs 18 MC, because that's uh, TR, uh, plus it's a standard project, and it provides tile. So you can see there that the game values tile placement as 4 MC. So what I've done here is I've taken the base price of ecological zone 12, zone 12 MC, added 3 MC, and then subtracted the, the 4 MC for the tile. So by using these numbers, we can now calculate the MC to VP ratio, which is a single metric that describes the efficiency of the card. So we just take the total cost of the card and divide it by VP, and VP here would be both victory points scored directly or victory points stolen from the opponent, but also plants, plants denied from the opponents uh, multiplied by this value here, uh, minus plants stolen from your, yourself multiplied by the same number. And if we sort the cards by this efficiency ratio, it's birds on top with uh, MC to VP ratio of only two and a half MC and fish with 2.7. But wait a minute, you might say, didn't you just say that Ecological Zone is one of the best cards in the game? And here is just in, in fourth place in terms of uh, efficiency. And yeah, I did say that. Uh, but I think there are two things happening here that we need to consider. So first of all, uh, the internal value of a tile in the game is 4MC, whereas in practical play, I think a tile is usually worth more than that so maybe something like uh, 5 MC in practice and if we bump up the value uh, what happens well sure enough uh, ecological zone is now up in third place 
not far behind birds and fish. And you could maybe even argue that a tile is worth a little bit more than 5MC and then and the efficiency ratio would be even better for EcoZone. So that's one thing. The other thing I would highlight is the number of times each card was played. You can see here that EcoZone was played a total of 4,500 times in this data set, which is significantly more than any of the other animal cards. Uh, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that EcoZone is a card that's pretty easy to play. And if we look at the card, it has a requirement, but the requirement is simply having placed one greenery. And I mean, have you ever played a, a Gatum of Terraforming Mars without having a single greenery? Uh, probably not. Uh, whereas some of those other cards, like for instance, Birds, you see it's played quite a bit less because you do need to reduce someone's plant production by two plants. And sometimes your opponent doesn't have two plant production and you'd rather not reduce your own. Uh, predators played a lot less. I mean, uh, it requires specific situations where your opponent does have animals to, to steal and, and you know, it needs to be used for a number of generations for the card to actually be worth it. Whereas with EcoZone, I mean, even if you play it in the final generation, it's often worth it. The tile can be used to fight for a landlord award. Um, it's guaranteed to score uh, one point on its own. And usually you'll be playing the bio cards even up until the last generation. So just the fact that this card is so universally good in almost every situation um, is kind of uh, why this card is so insane. It's not just the efficiency in terms of points scored per, per MC. The numbers we've looked at so far have all been collected from the entire data set, or at least uh, all of the two player games in the data set. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, this data set is biased towards strong players, but it also includes games where those strong players faced uh, much weaker opponents. So what I've done is I've created a subset of the data set where I've filtered for only games where all the players or both the players had a BGA rating of at least 600. That's what we're seeing on the bottom here. So having a BGA rating of over 600 means you're one of the top 100 players of more than 40,000 total. So these are some pretty strong players. Uh, and let's see if we can find any differences. Looking at these numbers, I see that it's fairly similar. Um, uh, the MC to VP ratio is actually almost the same for the strong players as in the other total data set. Uh, maybe a little bit surprising because you'd think that the stronger players play more efficiently, but I guess with the animal cards, it's mostly relatively straightforward how you actually score points. I mean, once you play livestock, you just click on the card and you get more animals. Uh, another thing to note, you know, small animals in ecological zone here switched places in the for the stronger players. The, the, I'd say that the data set here is small enough that this could maybe be just a coincidence, but maybe there's a trend there. Uh, we'll need to collect da more data to, to know for sure. So far, we've only looked at the theoretical values of the cards, but what if you look at the actual results, the win rates and ELO gains? And now the list looks quite different. So on top here in our complete data set, we now have herbivores on top with a win rate of almost 64%, slightly more than ecological zone. And if I, I jump over to my spreadsheet uh, of all cards, here, Herbivores is even one of the has one of the highest win rates out of all cards in the game in my data set. But in the strong versus strong uh, games, Herbivores is actually at the bottom with a negative win rate, less than fifty percent. Um, and another thing we can see here is that the uh, the win rates are more closely uh, are much closer in the strong uh, games. Um, very interesting here, pets being in second place among the strong players, whereas it's in dead last uh, in the entire data set. And I think what, a little bit of what we're seeing here is that you see here pets has been played quite a lot uh, among the, in the entire data set, like almost as much as like small animals and, and fish. Uh, whereas uh, among the strong players, it's, qu it's played 
quite a bit less. So I think the effect we're seeing here is that the strong players uh, only play pets when it's actually good. And then it does uh, score quite well. Uh, and I think one thing we're seeing up here is that Herbivores, which is a notoriously underrated card, probably being passed uh, over in the draft a little bit too often. So, you know, the uh, it gets capitalized on uh, quite a bit uh, against weak opponents. That's my guess anyway. We see both Livestock and Predators have uh, a bit lower win rates. Um, and it's not that these cards are inefficient in any way. I think like the data clearly shows that basically all of the animal cards are very efficient. But I think what we're seeing here also is that these cards do come with an opportunity cost. And I'd say especially livestock um, comes online at 9% oxygen, which is often like a very inopportune time to be playing a relatively expensive card like that. Uh, this is often when you're fighting for let's say the bonus uh, ocean uh, you have other priorities maybe you want to be playing herbivores and insects and other cards so sometimes this card can be pretty awkward to play and it can prevent you from playing more efficient cards even um, so i think that's that's one of the main issues of livestock more more than the fact that it's not efficient enough because it is quite efficient i mean Anytime you see a card, you know, with an MCDVP ratio of less than five, it's pretty good. And finally, I should give a mention to small animals. Um, this is like the little card that could. Uh, it's very efficient. Um, it seems like such an innocuous little card. And I've seen it placed in like the C tier in tier lists. And I totally disagree with that. I think it's an A tier card. Uh, very strong card and unlike livestock it's uh, much more convenient to play uh, not just because of its uh, its cost but also like because you can you can often play it before you engage in all the mayhem uh, that occurs when fighting for the bonus temperature and ocean uh, bumps well, if there's one thing we can take away from all of this, it's that these animal cards are really efficient. Uh, you should be playing them. And even if you already had a high opinion of them, you were probably underestimating at least some of them. And, uh, you know, eco zone, insane card, uh, birds and fish, herbivores, small animals, all powerhouse cards, uh, livestock and predators, situationally very strong. And yes, even pets can be really good sometimes. Uh, so with that, I hope you enjoy the video and see you around.